Hey guys, welcome back to a, another video. Um, I actually just picked up this unit, which is pretty cool. It's an FM unit and it allows tuning here, which tunes the frequency and it has volume and it's pretty easy to hook up. Um, but there's a problem with this board and I knew this coming into it and I wanted to show you. The problem is if you look at it, it says three to five volts. Um, that is oh, sorry, three to five point five actually, but that's not very much, right? Uh, typically, when we build our speaker boxes, uh, the minimum we build it with is twelve volts. In fact, if you're gonna get uh, one of the new Dayton or Sure audio boards that come with like little battery packs that you can put in, those all run off twelve volts, and then that's how it's portable. Now, I want to create a portable unit. Um, but I don't want to run it off 5 volts. If I run it off 5 volts, I'm just not going to get the power to the speakers I want and the sound clarity and quality that I want. Um, at least not with the, the project or build that I'm going to do next. And so I ran this because I realized that quite a few people probably want to do this, period. Um, and that is, have a 12 volt source like your amplifier board. In this case, we're just going to use a Sure Wandom board that's, uh, that can accept anywhere from 12 volts on up. How do we hook up power to both this board and this board without ruining it? And there's quite a few different ways, right? One of the ways is a step-down converter, and you can purchase a step-down converter. and um, They're usually a pretty decent size, depending on what you buy, and they can be fairly expensive. And then that step-down converter would go between the 12-volt power source and here. However, there's a cheaper and, dare I say, maybe even easier solution uh, easier may not be the right word but it is at least something that you might actually have in stock so let me show you what i'm talking about this look familiar yeah this is just a cigarette adapter that you can put in your car right well what do we know about our car our car runs off 12 volts and because our car runs off 12 volts we know that this will accept a 12 volt power source now this one's even cooler because this one says that it accepts what does that say? 12 to 24 volts DC and it outputs 5 volts. So I know that this needs anywhere between 3 to 5.5 volts. This will output at 5 volts. And I also know that this needs somewhere between 12 and 24 volts to power it. And that's it. So what we're going to do is we're going to disassemble this and show you how to hook it up between these two units so that you can have power. Now, most people probably have one of these laying around because this is just to power up like a USB cord, right? If you don't have one, you can pick one up at the store for under five bucks. Very cheap. Save yourself on shipping and handling with a step down converter. That's, that's basically what this is, okay? Um, yeah, it's inside here. It only does power. So give me a second. I'm going to disassemble this and I will show you how to hook that up between the two units so you can get power for everything. All right, guys, so I've disassembled the unit, and you'll get something like this. Now, there's a couple things that we know about this. Uh, one, these things on the outside are the negatives of this particular unit. And this in the middle is the positive. So you have a couple options. One, you can solder a wire directly to here, a red positive wire, or you can solder a negative directly to where these go on the board which is here and this one if you look at it is right here um, or if you want to use the whole thing which I would do just solder the wire directly here positive here and negatives here uh, let me show you what I mean by that what we did with this sure amplifier is we ran a power cord directly into it now this sure amplifier has a secondary power in so you can use either a power cord or or wires um, since we know that power can go in and out it can travel both ways we can use this as an out to power that the red goes into VCC and the black goes into GND or ground so what we're going to do is we're going to take some alligator clips and we're going to clip it on to the power and we're going to take one and clip it onto the ground. A different one, I should say. Now, 
I'm going to use them color coded. Do not touch the alligator clips together. As you'll create a short, you don't want to do that. And we'll take the ground first. Actually, I'm sorry, we'll take the positive first. The other end, and we will clip it right onto what we said is positive. And we'll take the negative and clip it right onto what we said is negative. Oh, and look, we have a light on, which shows that we have power to it. Now, question is, how do we get the power of the five volts out from there to this? Oh, well, there's two ways you can do it. The first way is going to be the easy way, and I'll show you what that is. This particular board actually has a micro USB in. And so the easiest thing to do is to use a micro USB cable. And before you hook it up, I don't like to get electrocuted no matter what the voltage is. And so I'm going to disconnect that and plug this in. It's always smart, guys, when you're working with electricity. Just be smart, unplug things. You know, don't save yourself the two seconds, right? Like the two seconds is, is not gonna, is not gonna hurt you to save, but uh, you know, getting electrocuted, you don't wanna get electrocuted. No one wants to get electrocuted. So we'll put the negative onto here again, and we will plug that positive back up. One thing, like I said earlier, don't connect the negatives and positives. Oh, and look, we have power. Now here's something I noticed about this board when I hooked up this to power, which I got to decide whether I like or not. Well, I don't like, but whether I want to keep it or not. Uh, for whatever reason, when I tune the frequency to the left, which is typically down, it goes up. And to the right, which is typically you know, up is down. And that's the same with the volume. Um, I don't like that. I think I'm going to keep it anyway, but I don't like that. Okay, so... That's the first way to do it. Second way, you're going to need a multimeter. So you're going to want to get yourself a multimeter and you're going to want to flip this over upside down so that you can see everything exposed. Now, the one thing that we know for sure is what the ground is. And we already know that because we have it hooked up. Now, the ground can be the same. Uh, it can be a shared ground. So you don't have to worry about, you know, where else is the ground on here. This is the ground. So this is always going to be negative. Now you're going to touch your red to all the different prongs on here until you read 5 volts. If it doesn't read 5 volts, you don't have it right. Now you'll know if it says 5 because it will actually read it on here and we'll show it. Or it'll read close to 5. It may not be exactly 5, but it'll be very close. So here we go. Let's touch this prong. There we go. 5.18. That is the positive lead that you would need to do. So what you'd want to do is solder a wire from here directly to this board and the part that says positive 5 volts and then you would solder another wire from either one of these grounds to that ground there and you can hook it up that way now that's to be used like if it doesn't have a USB but if it has a USB just use the USB there's no reason not to but it's that simple guys just and if you don't get it right like for example if the first one you had tried Let's do this so that we don't get it right. So we'll put a reading on here, and we'll put a reading here. See it? It says nothing. Uh, so that's obviously wrong. You put it here. Oh, 1.85. That's not right. Guys, that's actually powering the LED right there. So that's not right. So you keep touching until you do it. There might be multiple spots, like this one gives you five. This one gives you five. There you go, right? Use one of these. You're good to go. It's that easy. Um, so hook it up with one of those if you want to. Like I said, with me and and mine, I'm gonna buy a much shorter little USB cable. You can get these for so cheap. Um, and, and run it in my particular unit. But that's all you need, guys. Very inexpensive, very easy to do. Uh, I hope you like this video. For any of you guys that are trying to hook up a five volt uh, into a 12 volt system, you're good to go. Let me tell you the one last thing that you might want to use this for. One last thing you might want to use this for is, what is that? That's USB, right? If you cut out a hole in the back of your speaker box, what could you do? You could charge your phone. Now, this won't do data, because this is just a charger, 
But if you put that on either the back or the front of your speaker box, man, you could plug right in to there and charge your phone. It can be an Apple, that can be an Android, that could be anything. Now I'll do slow charging, just your normal five volt charging, but um, that's the other thing you could do with this. So guys, really cool. It's how to add a five volt from a 12 volt source. Uh, there's so many different uses for this. I will show this again in my upcoming build. Uh, so stay tuned for that and you will see some more about exactly how we do this and, and what, what else we're going to do with that. It's actually a really cool build. I'm pretty excited about it. All right, guys. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed it and have a great day. As always, if you like the video, please give it a like and feel free to share.